Hello, this is Angela with Parker's Permaculture. It's a pretty darn nice afternoon here in Portland, Oregon. I'm sitting in the side yard of my permaculture garden and we're in zone 8B. Now, I haven't made a video in a few days on this channel. I did release a video on Friday on my new channel, Parker's Hausfrau, so you should go check it out because everything there complements everything here. I had a minor surgical procedure on Wednesday, and so I'm not allowed to lift anything more than 10 pounds for a week. And boy, oh boy, if you are a big gardener like me and it is harvest time like it is here, um, you know that the prospect of not being able to lift anything more than 10 pounds is uh, incredibly frustrating. So I've had to rope in my four kids to help me with the plum and apple harvests here. I can help pick, but they have to carry the baskets and boxes of harvested fruit into the kitchen for me. So they've been really helpful with that. And I have been making applesauce and plum ketchup and uh, plum jam and apple butter pretty much nonstop for three days. Now, before I get into the subject of this video, which is talking about uh, the bags that I used to protect my apples earlier this year and whether that worked out well or not, it was an experiment. Just want to give a shout out and a thank you to all of my new patrons. I have 12 new patrons on Patreon and I really, really appreciate you. YouTube ad revenue is highly fluctuating and inconsistent and it's really comforting for my family to know that we can count on the support of um, the same group of folks every month for a consistent source of income. So um, I really, really appreciate you all and, and thank you for being so generous in your contributions. So as I'm sitting here trying to make this video, I just noticed something pretty darn adorable. So let me let me flip the camera around for a second real quick. Please, please don't mind this diversion. Just give me a sec. So this is my lean to bike shelter, which we've made out of all free stuff um, that we've ripped up off of pallets, except for the four by four here. And uh, you can see here that it keeps our bikes out of the rain because we live in a rainy climate. And as I'm sitting here filming, I noticed Mr. Squirrely has hidden a walnut up here. for his winter stash. So I'm gonna leave it, but um, I love how there's little bits of wildlife, even if it's kind of urban wildlife, uh, tucked in everywhere in my garden. And I love it when wildlife can make use of spaces that uh, humans have created. So anyway, back to the video. So earlier this year, I made a video in which I talked about how I am experimenting with protecting my apples. I purchased some heavy duty mesh bags and in the past I've used pantyhose, but they deteriorate rapidly and shed plastic pollution into the environment. So I thought I'm gonna try something a little bit more heavy duty and UV resistant and see how that works. Now, obviously I do not spray pesticides on any of my crops here. I do sometimes use a kaolin clay as a protective barrier, but uh, I usually am too lazy to get around to it. So I wanted to experiment with these bags and see, do I have res reduced coddling moth pressure? So this is the update video to let you know how that project turned out. Now bagging each tree, I bagged about 75% of the apples and it took between one to two hours per tree. I used to have eight apple trees, I now have five, so you do the math on that. So I had a little bit of mixed success with this system. I found that sometimes just the process of tying the bags on damaged the apples. I also found that the apples went ahead and did more of a June fruit drop, so the time at which you need to bag the apples, um, I found that I tried to remove extraneous apples in the cluster and bag the king or queen apple, however you want to call it. But sometimes that still fell off. So I ended up with uh, a lot of effort bagging apples that fell off the tree anyway. And it's really hard to get that uh, sweet spot where you're letting the, the fruit tree do its own June fruit drop, but you want to bag them before the coddling moths are active. So that was a little frustrating. So what I did find is for the apples that I bagged, I had zero coddling moths. I also had a complete lack of other uh, insect uh, damage to my apples. There was still bird damage. The apples up high on the tree that were facing upward and outward did get bird pecks. They couldn't get through the bag. The bags were not damaged, but the birds managed to ding the apple and then uh, rot would set in. So I did have some imperfect damaged apples in the bags that I had to get rid of. But let me show you. So again, Cox's orange pippin apple. I'm, I've actually preserved all of these except for just a couple that were still fresh eating. They look absolutely perfect. Okay. The ones I didn't bag, 
coddling moth and also some other insect damage, right? So these, this is actually a pretty good example, but um, this is still usable. I'm still gonna cut it up and we're gonna enjoy it. I'll just have to cut out the frass and hopefully the worm if it's in there. But um, really I found that the apples that were bagged were pristine except for those few that were bird packed. Let me show you another example. Now, in general, I only grow things that are tough and hardy and don't take a lot of effort from me, but there are a couple of heirloom apples that I'm just kind of a sucker about. And so I grow them even though they are mm, fussy. So one of those is the Cox's Orange Pippin that I just showed you. And the other one is this one, which is my favorite, Ashmead's Kernel. It is a little bit dry and it is a tart apple, great for baking, for making cider and for eating fresh. I really, really love it with hard cheese. Um, it's, just, it's just such a great apple. And I find it keeps pretty well too. This one you can see is gorgeous. This was bagged. This is a green apple that has a light russeting to it. Gorgeous. These are very, very tasty and every single one that's bagged is perfect. Show you another one, bagged beautiful. Not a fault on it. Okay. Well, let me show you what the ones look like that I didn't bag. Yikes. Yikes. Here's another one, not bagged. So I hope that gives you a little bit of a look. For me, it's worth it. I'll probably continue to bag. The bags I used this year are getting rinsed out and set in the sunshine. I'll be storing them over the winter and reutilizing them next year. For me, having those fine quality dessert apples um, and having them be really nice ones I can give as gifts to people and say, look at this gorgeous heirloom apple. You can't buy it in the store and it's just perfect. For me, it's worth taking the time to bag some of my apples. Now the ones that have coddling moth damage or other insect damage that are imperfect again they'll still get used in applesauce they'll still get used in cider and they won't go to waste so don't don't worry don't think that I'm not keeping or utilizing the ones that are imperfect but for me again I'll be doing this process again next year okay so let's say that you don't want to spend the time to bag apples and you definitely don't want to be spraying your apples and you acknowledge that a lot of apples, especially some of the really tasty heirloom ones, have a lot of problems. Maybe what you want to do is something I talk about frequently on this channel, and that's diversifying. And that's focusing on uh, utilizing other crops besides the ones that can be fussy and problematic and prone to issues. Use ones that are low maintenance and low problem in your climate. For example, this quince bush behind me doesn't get coddling moth doesn't get fly speck, doesn't get any of the other problems that I really can struggle with on some of my apples. Again, compared to a conventional orchard, my apples have very few problems, but I only have a quarter acre and I want every piece of fruit to be used. I don't want any wastage because every single one is precious to me and I spent time and energy to produce it. So I don't want anything to go to waste. And so if I can help something be the best quality it can be, I wanna do that. Quince, I don't have to do freaking anything. I just have to plant the tree and prune it once a year and boy oh boy, that's it. Just loaded, loaded with quince and I can use them any way I can use a cooked apple and I find they have better flavor than a cooked apple. No, I can't eat them raw, but it's something to think about in your permaculture design is how can you maybe, um, instead of getting frustrated with cycles of pests and diseases, just circumvent that cycle completely and try and use a different crop and see if it can fill that niche in your diet. So thanks for watching today. I have a lot to get done this afternoon and by a lot, I mean um, making damson gin and making damson plum jam. So um, I hope you all are staying safe. Thank you again to my new patrons. Uh, I will be back later this week. Thanks.